Uh, my name is uh, Reed Wolcott, National Weather Service Meteorologist here in Las Vegas. Uh, we actually produce uh, forecasts and warnings for all of Southern Nevada, Northwest Arizona, and Southeast California. We cover about 70,000 square miles, everywhere from Lake Havasu City up to Piotr, Nevada, uh, Kingman, over to Barstow, up to Bishop, California. So it's quite a large area that we cover. Uh, we produce, again, the forecasts and warnings, so any of those flash flood warnings, tornado warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings you might get on your cell phone or over the TV or you see online, those all come from our office uh, for that area. Uh, we also produce forecasts out to seven days, so any of the you know, seven day forecasts you see on TV, a lot of that information uh, starts here at our office. Outlined in pink in this, uh, in this screen here is actually the outline of our forecast area. So again, it's Southern Nevada, Northwest Arizona, and Southeast California. Um, if we zoom in to the, the Lake Havasu City area, there's some interesting terrain that goes on right around Lake Havasu City. It's kind of in a bowl, um, and that actually acts to create kind of a dome. Some of the locals refer to it as the Havadome um, over Lake Havasu City, where storms don't really like to get into the city itself. What ends up happening is um, showers and thunderstorms during the daytime will develop over the higher terrain, especially in the Hualapai Mountains and over the Mojave Preserve. Then through the afternoon, they, they will generally get closer and closer to Lake Havasu, but still mainly over the mountains. And it's really not until we get into the overnight hours when we start to have subsidence into the valley from the mountains where we really start to see storms in Lake Havasu City. So storms in Lake Havasu are most prevalent uh, in the overnight hours. There's more rising action over the mountains than there is over the valleys, especially earlier on in the day. Um, I'm talking like midday through early afternoon hours. Uh, the, the, the valley will catch up and then overtake it during the overnight hours, but most thunderstorms die around sunset. So there's a lot of times where you'll have those storms develop over the mountains during the daytime and everything dies off at night. We really need some sort of disturbance moving through the upper level flow to keep the storms going through the overnight hours. And we just don't get those very often in the monsoon season. This particular storm that's moving over Lake Havasu has what we call deviant motion. It doesn't follow the pattern of the rest of them. It's actually moving north-northeast in this case. That's a clear indicator that that storm is special. There's something interesting going on with that cloud or with that storm. Um, and if we flip over to uh, the velocity uh, product uh, from the radar, we can actually see that there's actually rotation going on within this storm. That's why this one ended up producing um, hail and damaging winds. During severe weather operations, we always have at least one person that's dedicated towards to radar, to, to analyzing the radar data. Um, and that's the only thing that they do. They don't answer phones, they don't, you know, they don't call people, they don't do any of that stuff. They just sit here and they look at the radar and they, they look for storms like that. And once it hits a threshold where they feel, you know, they feel that it's going to produce severe weather, and there's a lot of variables that go into that as well, um, they will issue a severe thunderstorm warning, which is a pretty quick process. Usually we can issue a, a severe thunderstorm warning in 30 to 45 seconds.